Welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson is on energy. Energy is the ability to do work or to cause change. The ability to do work is when a force causes something to move. So you pushing a heavy box across the ground, that's you doing work because you're applying a force that will cause that box to move. Okay, so you're expending energy. When the work is done, so when that box is pushed, or the changes happen, energy moves from place to place or is transferred. So the energy you're putting into moving the box, it doesn't just disappear or is destroyed, that energy is transferred. It's transferred to do the work of the box, it's transferred to the friction and heats, which heats up, um, friction releases thermal energy. So the energy is transferred and transformed in different ways, but the energy doesn't just disappear. Your energy is put to good use in this case. There are two main types of energy. We have kinetic energy and potential energy. And within those two categories, we have many more options. So kinetic energy is energy of movement. And in that, we have thermal, radiant, electrical, sound, and motion. So the energy of movement could be an object, or it could be the movement of um, atoms, molecules, or electrons, or waves um, within a substance. Potential energy is, um, it's, it's like the potential to have energy. It's like um, energy that is stored or energy that exists because of an object's position. So uh, gravitational energy, chemical energy, elastic, and nuclear, those are all forms of stored energy or energy by position. We're going to talk about those a lot more in detail now. Potential energy. Is stored energy or energy of position. So we have the first one which is called mechanical. It's also been called elastic potential energy. So mechanical or elastic potential energy is energy stored by tension in an object's, oops, I'm gonna have to spell that right. position. So you can think of an elastic rubber band. If you pull it back, you've put energy into that system by moving your hands. That helps put energy into that rubber band. Now the rubber band is sitting there waiting to be let go and, and fly across the room. So you've created this tension in the rubber band and that tension holds a certain amount of energy in it. That tension energy is this mechanical or elastic potential energy. So um, a rubber band we can think of as an example when it's pulled back. Um, also like a coil spring. Okay. You push down on the spring, it now has the potential to spring up, right? So it has this potential energy stored in it. The second one is chemical potential energy. And this is energy stored in a chemical bond. Okay, so when uh, two atoms come together, they, form, they can form a chemical bond. And there's energy you put in, to, not you, but the, there's energy put into that system to make that bond happen. So now the energy is stored by that bond. And if you break the bond, you can release that energy. Okay, and we do that um, with the food that we eat. We, you know, our food is, is technically chemicals. So we eat that, we break down those sugars, um, and what that means is we're breaking the bonds in the sugars and that releases energy for our bodies to use. The third one here is nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is energy stored uh, in the nucleus of an atom. So the nucleus of an atom has protons and neutrons, and they're held together by strong force. Um, and what that means is that there's a lot of energy put into holding those together, and if you can somehow break apart that nucleus or remove some particles from the nucleus, then you'll release a lot of energy as well. So that's nuclear energy. And then the last type of potential energy is gravitational potential energy. This is energy um, that exists, it's stored from the position of the object.
And this one has a formula that goes along with it. GPE is the gravitational potential energy equals M for mass. G, this is uh, gravitational acceleration. You'll learn a little bit more about gravitational acceleration in a later lesson on force. I recommend checking that out because gravitational acceleration changes uh, depending on the object that are in play. So the gravitational acceleration of the Earth is going to be different than the gravitational acceleration of, say, the moon. So we talk about that a little bit later, but I just wanted to mention gravitational acceleration. For this time, we're, we're talking about the Earth, and uh, so that's not going to change for us. The height is that H right there. So gravitational potential energy, GPE, depends on the mass, the gravitational acceleration, and the height. Like I said in this case, our gravitational acceleration is pretty much going to stay the same throughout this lesson since we're dealing with objects on Earth. So what's affecting our gravitational potential uh, energy here is our mass and our height. So if you increase the mass of something, the gravitational potential energy will also increase. If you increase the height of an object, then the gravitational potential energy will also increase. So if you are climbing a ladder, okay, the gravitational potential energy of the first rung, your GPE, will be lower than if you're on the top rung up here. So the GPE is higher. Okay? If you're carrying something up the ladder, you're going to have more gravitational potential energy. If you drop that object, now there's going to be less mass, so your gravitational potential energy will be lowered. And really, if you think about gravitational potential energy, it's like the potential to fall, right? The higher you go, you have higher energy put into getting that high, so now you have this energy that's stored because of your position. So you have a greater potential to fall, and then it'll change to more kinetic energy. And we'll talk about that when we talk about a pendulum uh, in